I'm just a guy who loves Disney and has way too much time on his hands. If anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I'm here to rate, review, and describe all of your favorite things from the magical world of Disney. I'm File91E and welcome to my Disney News and Reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Disney News and Reviews. I'm File91E. And a pretty cool week for me this week, guys. We're getting closer to Christmas and Star Wars The Force Awakens. I can't wait. Uh, the War in the Land last week was uh, going into the Big Thunder Mountain area. The Big Thunder Mountain, uh, uh, you know, ride attraction. That was always fun. Uh, it's really good. I think I don't think any of you posted that you got it, but you did. So, yeah, there you go. Anyway, uh, so bigger things going on with me is that I, I've been having some computer problems. Uh, I lost a hard drive, I believe, and uh, so uh, things might not be as graphical, you know, this week because I'm still in the process of getting everything back, but uh, fear not, I will get it back and uh, hopefully everything will be uh, A-OK, -okay. and um, uh, so no random uh, trivia or anything like that. I'll bring that back next week, hopefully, if I can get every, all the, uh, you, you know, the graphics back for that. Um, okay, so, uh, because of that, the Star Wars stream is kind of touch and go. As of right now, it's still on. Um, I think I can do it through my laptop if my big computer can't handle it. So, we'll just have to see what happens there. We'll see how it goes. So, if you don't know what, you know, what that Star Wars stream is, I plan on doing a, uh, I want to watch all six of the Star Wars before I see my, sh my showing of, uh, Star Wars, which is at 10 on, on Thursday. The 17th, you know, you know, not the 18th. I'm going to see it at the Senator Theater here. They're doing a 10 o'clock showing. They, you know, well, they had a 7 and a 10. I just clicked, chose the 10 just because it was easier, I guess. And, uh, yeah, didn't want to deal with all the crazy number of people. But there still will be a lot of people. And um, since I'm doing that, I, you know, I wanted to watch the Star Wars marathons. and uh, or, or, or I wanted to marathon all of the Star Wars movies. And that is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to kind of Shia LaBeouf it. I want to be Shia, Shia, Shia 91E and uh, just film or, you know, you, you know, just record me watching the Star Wars thing. So you might hear it in the background. You might not. I'm not sure how, you know, it's like whatever the mic picks up. But the main focus is me. So if you want to watch along at home, you can, you know, tune in, you know, obviously early on, earlier on in the day will be one, two and three and then four, five and six. I'm doing them in chronological order. Uh, so yeah, that should be very fun. That should be very fun. Uh, the thing that I, I think and killed my computer was my uh, 2011 videos. I have no idea why. I just think there was some corrupted stuff in there and it kind of glitched everything out. But anyway, the 2011 videos are up, um, except for the Halloween party that got taken down. Uh, it's kind of funny. Um, it got taken down because of the Flight of the Valkyries that thing. I, I put a bunch of other music in there that still got flagged, so everybody in Germany can't watch this <laughs> or watch that. Um, but uh, sorry, people in Germany, I apologize. They are up for everybody else, but people in Germany, your copyright laws suck. Uh, anyway, um, so the fact that the Flight of the Valkyries is the thing that uh, got everybody you know you know caused all this you know or that to get taken or at least that part to get taken down it's kind of funny i might try to re-upload it and maybe mute that section and just see if it can do all that but again i gotta wait for my computer to do all that so uh we will see what's going on in the future but you know right now as of right now the rest of the 20,000 uh or 2011 uh videos are up so that's fun good stuff with that i hope you guys enjoyed that it you know killed my computer i killed my computer to do that for you yeah, there you go. Anyway, uh, it was also uh, Walt's birthday this past week, so that was kind of cool. Uh, happy birthday, Mr. Disney. That's news, for, or that's what's going on with me this week. Let's get right to the review, or news, news, news. We're doing the news first. Not a ton of news this week, but enough, so here we go. The premier theater on the streets of America will become home to this year's Comedy Warehouse Holiday Special at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Uh, the fun begins on December 19th uh, with six shows per day through uh, January 2nd, 2016. Showtimes are, are 11.30 a.m., 
uh, 12.30 p.m., 1.30 p.m., 3.30 p.m., 4.30 p.m., and 5.30 p.m. So if you're interested in that comedy section, check that out. Walt Disney Imagineering brought a welcome surprise to Epcot's World Case, World World Showcase, with the unveiling of a new audio animatronic finale to the to the Mexico Pavilion's Grand Fiesta Tour, starring the three caballeros. Uh, in a in place of the former animated movie scene uh, that formed the attraction's finale since its major refurbishment in 2007. Uh, three audio anim animatronic figures now com uh, complete the ride with Panchito, Jose Carioca, and uh, Donald Duck taking the stage. So that's pretty cool. Pretty neat stuff there. You know, uh, you know, it makes I, I guess it rounds out that uh, that ride nicely. Yeah, ride nicely. I really like it. Work is continuing around the waterways of Asia, Disney's Animal Kingdom, installing the uh, the show elements and seating areas for the upcoming Rivers of Light show. Can't wait for this. Still no precise opening date set, but uh, expected to debut in the spring, and on Earth Day, which is April 22nd this year, has always been a very popular opening date at the park, so it could be a target here for that. So I, that makes sense, that makes sense. And finally, the, the Kali River Rapids at Disney's Animal Kingdom is scheduled to close for uh, just over a month in early 2016. The refurbishment is set to begin on January 5th through to February 11th, reopening to guests on February 12th, so yeah. That's the news for this week. I know uh, it wasn't a whole lot. Let's get right to the reviews. All right, guys, the first thing I want to review for you today is Tuck and Roll's Drive em Buggies. And here is what these guys have to say about that. Uh, bumper cars, adults as well as children can ride. Cars are much slower on normal bumper car rides or then on normal bumper car rides, two stars. Um, that's pretty much it, really, but let's you know go right into it. Uh, this is located at Flix Fun Fair in Disney's California Adventure. And this opened on uh, uh, October 7th, 2002, and uh, basically, like they said, it's just bumper cars uh, with a theme from A Bug's Life. If, uh, if you don't know who Tuck and Roll are, they're the two potato bugs or pill bugs that uh, are, you know, uh, they don't really know a lot of uh, English or they don't know how to speak very well. So uh, they're uh, acrobatic performers and this is their area. Uh, so you can go in and uh, uh, they're, these are kind of kiddie ride bumper cars. So again, like they said, it's not as fast as, the, as, as normal bumper cars. So adults might not really be into that, but um, kids really like it because they love to drive around. Now, uh, there's room for two in each car, uh, mainly one adult, one kid, that sort of thing. Uh, so that's kind of fun. And ra wait times for this are actually rarely over 15 minutes. Uh, you know, they do have a good turnaround time. Um, this is actually a really good addition for the kids area. This is uh, in Flix Fun Fair, which is uh, mainly just for all kids. If you go uh, try to go into... Uh, uh, you know, past It's Tough to Be a Bug, which is uh, great for adults as well. Uh, this is mainly uh, a kid's play area. They have a slow-moving train ride and a kind of, uh, you know, a bunch of spinny things that, you know, you know kids love. Uh, a lot of really smaller kids. Uh, but the main thing here is, uh, or, or one of the main things is the bumper cars. It takes up a lot of yardage and uh, kids really seem to like it just because they get to drive around and feel like, a, you know, a big adult. Um, you saw some footage there. That's pretty much it. I don't really have... A whole lot. I didn't get on this because I don't fit on smaller bumper cars, but uh, uh, you know, a lot of kids seem to enjoy it. Uh, again, like I said, this is a great addition to it. Um, you know, two flicks fun fair. I let you know it's it's good to have a, a section, you know, just for kids so the kids can run around and get, you know, their you know blow off some steam, you know, as as opposed to waiting in the uh, lines all day. But uh, yeah, this uh, this is definitely uh, not for adults, mainly for kids. So uh, if you're adult, you know. It, if you're an adult, you can skip this, but uh, kids like it. If you're a parent and you want to, you know, have an area where your kid can just run around and have fun, Flex Fun Fair is, is is a great place for it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what it is. So what am I going to give Tuck and Rolls Drive em Buggies? Uh, I think I'll give this two stars. That was a, that was a fair rating. It's not terrible. It's not a useless ride. It is useless for you know for adults, but kids like it. So uh, I, I can't not you know you know give it a one star. It's not totally useless uh, for kids. It is uh, a very fair uh, you know good attraction for adults. It's not uh, so you can just easily skip this. But uh, if you have kids, this is something that they're probably going to want to get on maybe multiple times. So. Uh, just know, again, wait times are rarely over 15 minutes, so that's good. Uh, 
So there you go. Tuck and rolls, drive and buggies, two stars. The next thing I want to talk to you about today is King Arthur Carousel. This actually has a lot of history in Disney, so I have a you know a couple notes here for you. Now, what these guys say, King Arthur Carousel is a merry-go-round minor attraction. Go before 11:30 a.m. or after 5 p.m. A showpiece carousel. Adults enjoy the beauty and nostalgia of this ride. Three stars. Now, King Arthur's Carousel um, is a very kind of a big deal in Disney lore. Uh, this is located in Fantasyland in Disneyland Park and opened on July 17th, 1955, opening day at Disneyland. Now, I wrote right down here, this is a Disneyland original through and through. The carousel in Griffith Park inspired Disneyland. It was a carousel that inspired all of this, that got all of this going, you know, uh, you know, I would not be here talking about Disneyland or, Dis or Disney World or whatever if it hadn't been for that one carousel and that one bench that Walt Disney sat on while his kids rode the carousel and he just sat there eating peanuts going, I wish there was a place where I could enjoy uh, you know, a ride just as much as my daughters do. Um, you know, there should be a place for families and whatnot to go where, they, where everybody can enjoy themselves. So that got the ball rolling on what became eventually Disneyland. And um, it's hilarious to think that such a simple ride could, but you know, it's not so so un, uncharacteristic. Uh, you know, Disney had always taken notes around uh, different theme parks and whatnot. He'd note and, and, and noted that you know, a lot were dirty and other uh, and other ones were like, you know, like that, but they all had a carousel and uh, you know, he had liked rides like that. And um, obviously, if he was going to build or have a carousel in his park, he was going to have one, you know, a replica of the one that he used to, he, you know, he used to love to go to, and that was the one at Griffith uh, Park. Now, uh, this is located, like I said, in you know, in Fantasyland, directly, you know, through the uh, the castle. It's right there, uh, so you, you know, so you can see it. And uh, there is a carousel pretty much at each of the Disneyland parks around the world. Um, well, what's really cool about this particular carousel the, is that pretty much all of these are jumpers, uh, meaning they, uh, they all go up and down and up and down like that. I don't think there are any that don't, I'm pretty, uh, the, I, 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 I didn't, I don't remember seeing them, but, um, it's just kind of cool to see, you know, uh, it's a, you know, it's a basic carousel. There's nothing really, you know, spectacular about it. It's a merry-go-round. But uh, there are a, a couple horses, or at least one one horse in particular that uh, uh, you know means a little bit more than the other ones. Um, you got Jingles the horse, which was Walt's horse. Uh, it's the horse. It's uh, the, all all the horses are white because everybody wanted the white horse, and eventually they just kind of you know made more and painted them all white because they didn't want anybody to feel left out. But there is one white horse. So it's on the outside that has a lot of these kind of jingle bells on it uh, and Walt named it Jingles the horse that was his favorite horse he has the horse he liked to uh, you know to, to to get on and he he dubbed that the lead horse even though it's a circle and there's horses in front or in back of him he says that's the lead horse now when uh, Disneyland uh, was rededicated uh, you know for its 50th anniversary uh, that was kind of rededicated as the Mary Poppins slash Julie Andrews horse uh, because it was Walt's favorite and Julie Andrews was a favorite of Walt's and you know Mary Poppins that whole thing So uh, it's kind of cool. So if you see it, you'll see it now you, there uh, There's some paintings. There's some graphics painted on the horse itself. You'll see the uh, the the umbrella and uh, the uh, initials J.A. painted on there as well. So uh, look for Jingles the horse the next time you go to Disneyland and uh, It's a very prized horse. So you might have to fight for it, but if you get Jingles the horse uh, you will not be disappointed. That is one of uh, the more historical horses there of King Arthur's Carousel. Uh, one of the other cooler things about this attraction, uh, it's kind of right outside the attraction, and that's the Sword in the Stone ceremony. Uh, when you walk uh, you know, past King Arthur's Carousel, because it is King Arthur, you'll see the stone or, you know, or the sword in the stone. And uh, a lot of people come up and try to, uh, you know, to pull it up. It's a, lot of, it's a very good picture spot, but sometimes they'll actually have a... Uh, 
you know, a ceremony, you know, during the day where they'll get some, you know, some kid to come up and he'll pull the, you know, pull up the sword. It doesn't come all the way up, but he'll pull up the sword and then they'll be granted, you know, you know he's the king, that sort of thing. It's a cool little thing, you know, th you know thing that they can do. Uh, you know, it's very magical for the kid that gets to, uh, you know, to do that. And um, uh, it just fits well with the King Arthur area, you know, King Arthur theme. Uh, so that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so there's a lot of history behind uh, King Arthur's Carousel. So the next time you're in Disneyland, check it out. If you didn't know any of the history, but you know, all you people are Disney fans, obviously, so I'm sure you do. So what am I going to give King Arthur's Carousel? And while it does have a lot of history, um, this did inspire the park. Uh, it's still just a carousel, and it's you don't have to get on it each and every single time you go in, but you should take it, you know, take notice of it. So because of that, I'm just going to give this three stars. They got it right. Um, I might want to notch it up to like a three and a half just because of the historical purposes, but I don't do that. So I'll just knock it, you know, I knock it right back down to a three. It is very historical. It, it belongs in the park because a carousel inspired everything that is Disney that we know today about Disneyland. And, uh, if it wasn't for this ride, we would, you know, be not talking about anything. I think the world would be a lot, uh, un unhappier of a place. You know, that's the one good thing about Disneyland. Everybody leaves happy. And if you don't, it's your fault. It's the happiest place on earth. Let's just be real here. So yeah, there you go. King Arthur's Carousel in Disneyland Park and Fantasyland. Three stars. Check it out. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Disney news and reviews again. I know it's not that long, but I got some technical issues. But I wanted to get a video out for you guys this week. And uh, next week, we got Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's coming out, I'm hoping. Uh, to be, you know, get all my technical issues worked out uh, before and uh, so I can actually get something out for for you, uh, you know, and actually get that stream going. That would be awesome. So I, th I think I should be able to, but I know I lost some things and I have to work more, you know, to, to get it back. But it's okay. It's okay. It could be worse. It could be worse. So, yeah. If anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I want people to go to Disney World or Disneyland and have a spectacular time uh you know check out king arthur's carousel the you know the driving buggies even though yes i know they're not you know classical attraction not thrill rides they still have some you know, you know some meaning the driving buggies more for kids but historical purposes that king arthur's carousel that's awesome and if you are going to Disney World or Disneyland, be sure to go to allers.net, touringplans.com, wdwmagic.com for our latest and greatest Disney news, wealthdisneyworld.com is good too, and uh, disneyland.com is good too. Straight from the horse's mouth. Can't mess that up. And uh, micechat.com is great. That's where I get my Disneyland news. There, I, I did check. There really isn't many much Disneyland news going on right now. Christmas. Christmas and Disney. It's great. Everybody's having fun. So, yeah. So I'm going to go try to fix my computer. The things and money that I pour out for you guys, it's unreal. But uh, I do it because I love you. I do. So uh, I don't have any of my stuff, any of my old footage. So not yet. So I will uh, do the Where in the Land next week. And, uh, you know, just go watch Star Wars trailers. Just watch Star Wars trailers for me. That's, that's, where, that's where you should be. That's where I will be. Where in the Land am I? I'm watching Star Wars trailers. So I'll see you guys next time for another Disney news and reviews next week. Star Wars! Bye, guys.